Hello and welcome to A Candle to the Unknown, an interesting game that I actually have good expectations for because I viewed the game on itch.io and it gave me good vibes. I watched the trailer, good vibes. So I have good expectations and I'm hope I won't be disappointed because it, it, again, it gave me good damn vibes. Uh, I initially played this a little bit. I didn't even get too far, so not to be worried about because I was playing it and found out I wasn't recording when I was actually wanting to record. So 10 minutes later, I was like, hey, I'm not recording. Hooray. But, <laughs> so I'm just going to do it again. But this time I'm going to record. But it's getting a little buggy, so it's a good thing I restarted. But I'm going to get into it again. I'll read the instructions just so you guys are familiar. It's a point and click game. And, I don't know, it's just mouse click, you know, actions. Take an item, talk, enlarge, look, wait, walk. And, uh... Inventory system. Also, there's a typo there. But yeah, it looks like an interesting game. We're gonna get right into it. And of course, as we get into it, be sure to hit the like button if you haven't already, and hit that subscribe button. Become a subscriber if you have not already. And let's get into it. A Proof of Faith, Chapter 1. While the other Chapter 2 is kind of entangled. We're just dealing with the prologue, apparently. In any cell of the Abbey. Proof of Faith. I'm not even going to try to pronounce what he's saying, he's just reciting his prayer. Yeah, it just reminds me of Faith all over again with the... With exactly the same kind of prayers and recites, but probably, probably different. I, I don't know. I'm not a professional on this. I won't even pretend to be. But one of the things I might do is actually answer the door. Or go back to prayer, actually. How strange. The brothers must be at the comp line. Anyway, I don't intend to open the door. What I chose before was look into the room and continue the prayer. I didn't do, so I'll do this out of curiosity. I must continue my task. Because, uh, I found out, like, there's bad endings and stuff that are, that are in the game, and I found it kind of funny. There aren't any manual saves, it's just auto-saves. So I will, uh, if I beat the prologue, I'll just do what I did before when I wasn't recording. But we'll see if I can proceed through this game, if I have to do this specifically. I'm not sure if they're staying true to the retro style of gaming point-and-click, where so much insistence irritates me. Where, in order to do, win games that were, like, old like this, you could play games, I'm not going to open it yet. The door connects to the hallway, and then they slip the note. Someone just slipped the note. I can't read it, but he explains, These are the prayers I was reciting. How strange, I had this paper hidden behind the crucifix. See, it like... It looks like the silhouette of a person. I think my eyesight is tired. If I get closer to him, do I die? Huh. Strange. Outside, the resplendent moonlight illuminates the night. I don't know why he's saying I'm not tired right now on the stool, though. Otherwise, grab the few things I have in the drawer. Okay. In the drawer, I keep a few things. Inside, I keep the three matches and the key to my cell. And these matches, they do go out, so no wasting the matches. Because as I was saying, in these met retro games, like one I would point out at the top of my head that I liked as a kid was one called Future Wars. Um, it was a game where it's like you start as like, it's just some lowly window cleaning dude, and and then you find like this creepy ass, like I remember as a kid it would creep me out. It, uh, like, he finds, like, some kind of weird secret room in his boss's room, and it tries to compress and just squeeze you like a trash compactor. And it's super spooky, and it rushes you, and you have to know the code. If you don't know the code, you get crushed alive. And then as you use the machine, then you go back in time, and then you go to medieval period, and it's like, what the fuck, man? And then there's a robot fucking wolf, and you're like, what the fuck? And you die very easily in that game. That's just the gist of it. But games like that, the point I was trying to say is, in those games, if you make one mistake, or do not pick up an item, 
you're basically fucked. The entire game is just gone. You just restart from the start. You didn't pick up this pesticide behind the toilet because you didn't examine it three times. You're done. No, the game's done. You need the pesticide sort of shit. So I'm wondering if this game is like that where you can fuck up that easily. Otherwise, let's grab this uh, crucifix. What was that? The crucifix has been thrown to the floor. It looks as if there is something written in blood. Also, the mice hideaway has been here in the cell since I lived here. Let's grab this cross then. A shiver has run through my body. I actually don't think picking up that was a good idea. Probably not. Will uh, With the thousand eyes, I will be your guide. When they watch you from above, the false god can be burned. Wait. When they watch you from above, the false god can be burned. Hmm. Anyways, we'll use a match. Maybe that's a hint on what I need to do. When the false god is watching from above. Hmm. Its gaze is unsettling. Now this is the one thing that... That... I was confused about, so I wonder if I have to do it right here. Or over there? Hmm. So that was what, what confused me, what, what the owl said. It might be super important. Because this guy keeps saying, I don't want to open the door. So here's where I was stuck before. When I burn this cross, I'm going to look at it. There's something you special about it, or evil. There's something inscribed on the cross. Prove your faith. It looks as if there is another object inside the hole. Hi, ah, yes. Didn't grab that. There's a strange medallion. What is this amulet? It seems to represent a creature with many eyes. I wonder if I can combine it or something. Or maybe I can burn this. I can't. That's the thing that weirds me out then. It's like, what do I do? I can't. I just try everything with everything. That is essentially... what I need to do. Or... Oh! Oh, give it to the owl! Why? The amulet and its eyes shine intensely. So, so what, now I can burn the cross or something? Hmm, maybe I can burn it now. So I remember, I knew I saw the mouse stick picking it. No, oh, maybe I can burn it now. He's saying with that, the owl is making it so they can't see what I'm doing, perhaps. I'll burn it now. The fire will erase every impure trace. Okay, yeah, okay, that's how I get this then. Impure trace, what do you mean? It is a crown of dry thorns, similar to the one that was placed on the head of Jesus Christ to mock him. I can only serve him. Huh. Interesting. You already know what you have to do. Sure, do I have to kill everyone? Am I a messiah now? Your time has come. Moses set vivid. Citations of sorts, but I. And when he descends from the stars, he will open his maw and devour all sanity. Then he will spread his nightmarish wings and cover the world with his shadow. What? I'm so confused. 
Yeah, I better not just be chapter one right there. Better continue from here. I'd be a little bit disappointed. Like, they're giving me this presentation that's very grandiose of things. Like, great... Great... An hour before. Okay, good. I was about to say, if that was all that there was to prologue is escaping the room, I'd be super disappointed. I mean, in terms of the gameplay, I'm sure a lot of people can easily agree by already going through this. It's retro, but at the same time, it's something unique. I, I haven't seen something like this. Because it's both retro, something that's from the past, but as well, it's it's in a presentation that's also sort of modern. It's like what... That's why I really compared it with Faith to begin with. Because it's retro, but also somewhat modern. Mother. Also, there's a bird outside the window I don't trust. I'm trying to compile my thoughts and explain, but I think I'm doing a poor job at it. At the very least, I'm recording this time. I'd be pretty pissed off that I wasn't again. That was it! What? And now there's a little dude in the window on the bottom right. Oh, never mind, the dude just went off. Oh, nope, there, there's the dude again. Weird. And that's it? Oh, oh, there, oh! It opened! Oh! Shit, I got chapter two now. And chapter three. Chapter one, two, and three are part of the prologue? What? In one of the hallways of the Abbey, dark secrets. Huh. Huh. Well, I mean, I've only been recording for, like, 10-12 minutes. Right now, the brothers are going to comply in which Tanya is celebrated to honor the memory of the late brother Thomas. So that's just one character and part of this whole thing. Now, at the very least, it wasn't just chapter one. I would be super disappointed. The abbot has asked me to investigate a book that is in his private library, so he will justify my absence by telling the congregation that I am sick. I must hurry and find out everything I can while the mass lasts. No one must see me. Okay. Let's see. Got the golden key. It's the key to my room. And it's the key to the Abbot's li uh, private library. He has entrusted it to me. I have to go to the li- well, Is this your room? It is your cell. Okay, never mind. This guy- So we cannot be seen. And I- oh, wait. I must not be dis- well, I mean, what is that? I don't care if you get- okay, he doesn't want to- but that's not the live- also that- this is not the way- okay, that's what he's saying. The text went so fast just because I was clicking. I got you. The library must be this way, then. And what is this room? Okay, it's still not the library. Or is it gonna like be, is it gonna have a giant will Wil Wilhelm have missed the night prayer he must not notice my presence hmm is that who the first character was I was playing I must not be distracted is what the library just gonna have like a big fucking sign over saying library it seems that someone has knocked on a door it's very weird. I don't see anyone in the hallway. Oh, so that, that connects part one, but didn't it say an hour ago? Or was that just for the carriage dude? I don't know, whatever. So whoever knocked on the door to the character in chapter one wasn't even a real person. Events are taking place that transcend human comprehension. I must find the Umbra Kabbalah. First we need to find a fucking candle. What is this here? Oh, a crank. Oh, jeez. Oh. A bit shadow creature left the node. Huh. Interesting. 
I'm trying to remember too, there was a series of cartoon-esque point-and-click games I'm really going to have to look back into. And I'll post it probably in the comments unless people know what I'm referring to, but I highly doubt. There's a point-and-click series that I don't think was on Newgrounds, but it, maybe it could be. It was a Flash series of cartoons, and I think it was like five episodes, where it was like a Dark Shadow uh, point-and-click game, where it's like in the last episode they're at like freaking the Stonehenge. But the thing with the game that was really spooky spooky is if you misclicked or clicked the wrong things too many times, the impending darkness or shadow would literally kill you and make it so your game is just, you're gone. Start from the beginning again. And it was really spooky. I remember playing as a kid a lot, trying to beat it. But it was, the puzzles were so fucking sophisticated or just, it would trump you unless you're super good at knowing what the fuck you need to do. And it was a really good game, like really unique for its time. A title by Marquis de Said, Said and George Sand appear among others. But yeah, I don't know, I gotta refine that game series, because I remember it was really cool, but it just, it killed you and reset your progress. It was a cool gimmick, but I really want to find them again, just for nostalgic sake. We gotta find out what this guy wants in 85 time limit. There appears to be something under the bookshelf. Hammer? Why would anyone hide a hammer here? Hmm... Before I do something that I may regret, I should focus on the... on what the abbot asked me. True. It is a desk with several writing utensils. The full moon shines brightly. I think the book of which the abbot spoke of could be found here. Here it is. Hmm. Ah, requires a code. As the abbot said, it has a really peculiar lock. I think he overestimates my qualities. I don't understand either the drawn runes or the locking mechanism. The book is quite heavy. I should place it on the desk to observe it better. True. Okay. Uh, now we hammer it. <laughs> I mean, it's trying to tell me, like, maybe there's a triangle the first thing. It seems that it is not the correct combination. Why is this ruin... I find it peculiar that, uh... That ruin is one of the ruins that are in the combination. Hmm. I should find a way to open the lock. Now hammer it! Someone has hit this wall. I hope the abbot will forgive me for this, but it may be the only chance to discover how many other dark secrets are kept in this library. Well, everyone's gone except for that one dude, so I mean, nothing to fear. The hammer has become useless. Of course it has. Uh, hopefully I don't die by coming in here. This room was undoubtedly abandoned a long time ago. Yeah, this seems like a dangerous room. The spiders have used the cracks to nest. Yeah. There are runes drawn on the wall. They are similar to those composed the locking of the Umbra Kabbalah. Ah. They look a little different, but... Hmm... Like, it looks too different, if anything. Those are human bones! If I go too far, I'm going to die, aren't I? Let's find out. Most of the bones that form a complete human body are missing. What is that hole? No! Oh, it is very... No! Curiosity to kill the cat. The lower floor cannot be glimpsed. It is as if there is an infinite void. There's like death in there, isn't it? I should not get too close. Hmm. Some cobwebs are huge. What kind of insects will they be? Will they catch in their webs? Wait, oh, there's a piece of paper. Oh, I write these lines with the last strengths I keep. I know I will never see the sunlight again. My name is Bernie Hyder. I have devoted my entire life to the study of what is known 
unknown to man and neither philosophy nor science explains, because of my boldness I've ended up locked in this dark enclosure for which for a while seemed liberating to me, but now it is just, it just makes me feel like a, feel a complete emptiness. In the beginning, I spent all my time to performing the rituals that I had memorized, seeking to connect more deeply with those entities which had been previously appeared before me. However, in my attempts were in vain, I even doubted their existence, but no. The ruins that appeared inscribed on the wall removed my doubts. Although they, although they involved a painful warning, in a last effort to get their attention I was able to break with reality and open a portal, but this was also uncertain because its journey leads nowhere. And now it is exposed in front of me, unleashing, ex unleashing its existence an unspeakable terror and sorrow. If someone finds this note, and by then nothing much has changed in the Abbey, the books I wrote and illustrated revealing all my discoveries should remain in the library. The most important of them is the Umbra Kabbalah, because inside it contains the strange amulet that I found on my last, on one of my last travels. Its opening is reserved for those who are able to decipher the code of its locking mechanism, for the reason I leave the, with these words, the key that can help the initiates to expand their knowledge, I only cherish one hope. The day when arrives. It seems that the letter is unfinished. There is a picture next to it. Huh. Well, that's a nice pencil sketch. Otherwise. Hmm. I'm sort of confused because there's a lot more... And this is supposed to be combined. It's like a sword and... How the fuck do these symbols have any relation? See, those have like triple dots, so that's fine enough. And that one's like a musical note. But it's like there's six symbols. I'm so confused with the meaning. There's six, but if by any reason they're combined, hmm. Ah, wait, a book to translate. Oh, there's a tome that has engraved some runes similar to those of the comic book. Oh my god, there's a translation. Okay, so it wasn't a puzzle to figure out what the fuck the meanings of the ones on the wall have to do with the booklet or how it translates. It's just there's a book of translation. Fuck me. Okay, Jesus Christ. The tomes of these shells are extremely rare. Those, these ones talk about entities belonging to diverse cultures and beliefs. Hmm, there's an especially peculiar book. Oh, jeez, I don't like that one. Wait, don't oh, get over there. The shelves are filled with books by authors persecuted by the church, titles Marquis de Sade and uh, George Sand. The titles refer to bi bi biographies of people who are persecuted by the church. I suspect that the other books deal with various methods of torture used by the Inquisition. I'm going to get a feeling that this red book is evil looking. It's bad if I read it. Drucked Karag. These beings usually stalk their prey in the shadows, waiting for the right moment to pounce on it and skewer it with their two long, sharp limbs similar to blades. Oh, that's cool. I wasn't done reading. Did I turn the page? Truck go go or truck go Tro troco. Although they look like one of the most primordial entities that exist because of their limited capacities, they could be a mutation originated from the arrival of other beings on Earth. These creatures possess attributes of plant and animal, and they act following the most basic instinct to feed themselves. Usually, they go glide through the shadows to their target, and once behind it, they gobble it up 
and tear it apart with their jaws. Ah, that's the thing I saw. They're mostly peaceful and quiet beings who live flowing with nature and in harmony with all its living things. Some of them are separated from their fellow creatures and destined to follow the orders of those who rule the unknown. The thin protuberances that emerge from his head enable him to detect any trace of life around him. Razemek. Although these creatures have feet with a reptilian appearance, they always use their tentacles to move. Being able to do it at high speed, they do not usually allow themselves to be seen in front of other creatures. And then those things. Maya... Maya Sarag. They... probably butchering all these pronunciations. They do not have a defined shape. They take an appearance similar to any other creature in front of them. Hmm. Maybe that is what was the thing that was in front of the dude's bed before the owl scared it away and when I touched the cross or something. Hmm. Oh, jeez. Ah. Uh. What? Shelter home. Significant binding. Jesus Christ, okay, um... Okay, let's just go in the shadows, I guess, and translate. Uh... So first is, like, the sword, and then... Let's just say... A and a T. Ah, that's the second one. Ritual Invocation. I guess I'm gonna have to just write this shit down, because I'm not gonna remember off by heart. Uh, so I don't have to go back and forth and back and forth. I'm going to just skip or end the episode right here. I've been recording a long, long, long time. And I'm just going to leave it here and make it two parts for this demo alpha beta prototype pro pro prologue game. But I hope you've enjoyed so far the content of this demo. I look forward to the next and last part of the demo. If you are enjoying, please leave a like, comment, hit that subscribe button, big muffle subscriber, hit that bell notification down below updates on my videos. Thank you for watching, until the next time. Mm.